The posts this week have been about Pentecost and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And the fact that Jews who had received the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, been filled with the Spirit, would begin to read their book in a completely new light. Now that Jesus of Nazareth had been enthroned as Messiah in heaven with all authority over heaven and earth as a man. Yesterday we saw how Charles Wesley, a Gentile, saw Christ in Psalm 45 and turned it into a beautiful hymn of praise. Today I'm going to sing a version of the whole psalm that I've written myself. The revelation of the Holy Spirit not only brought out from Psalm 45 that Jesus was the king referred to, but that the bride in Psalm 45 was his beloved, his church. This was a, a theme that could be found in the Old Testament scriptures, but it came into new prominence in the New Testament and, of course, reached its culmination in the revelation given to John of the marriage supper of the Lamb. What tremendous light was being uh, poured out at Pentecost. And Jewish believers now filled with the Spirit would begin to worship with the Psalms uh, with a completely new meaning and insight. So what I'm really saying is that the Holy Spirit reveals Christ preeminently in the Psalms. They are about him. And Gentiles who attach themselves to the Jews would uh, learn through the Greek version of the, of the Psalms how to sing them probably to Jewish tunes. And so it was probably in Antioch where uh, uh, Jews began to preach the gospel directly to Gentiles, Gentiles who have no background at all uh, in the Jewish scriptures. Uh, and these Gentiles, as they came to Christ and were filled with the Spirit, would now learn to worship through the Jewish Psalms. I don't think the importance of the Psalms in Christian wor worship could possibly be overemphasized. They were God's Spirit-inspired hymn book to his church, not just for the Old Testament, but for all ages. And they are supposed to take a preeminent place in the church's praise and worship. There's an important passage uh, written by Paul to the Ephesians, uh, where he talks about being wise and having understanding in days of darkness and deception. And he writes to the Ephesians, who were predominantly Gentile believers, that the way to go on being filled with the Spirit, and of course we have Pentecost in mind, the way to go on being filled with the Spirit is to sing psalms, Jewish psalms, in that case in the Greek translation, for us in English, of course. And in Colossians, Paul gives the same exhortation, but in this case he says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you sing psalms. And so the singing of psalms is the way in which truths about Christ become embedded in our hearts and are offered back to God in worship. And that's why I wonder why psalms are almost never sung in contemporary worship. And if they are, it might be one line or verse of a psalm, uh, or one idea from a psalm, but rarely do you hear whole psalms being sung. Why are the psalms not at the core of praise and worship in churches that place a strong emphasis on the Holy Spirit in praise and worship? If psalms and singing the psalms is one of the preeminent ways of going on being filled with the Spirit. I want to explore this more through the Adullam's Cave project. But this is my offering on Psalm 45 for today. It is, as Paul says, a word of Christ and his bride that should dwell in us richly. And that's where, of course, the tunes and hymns are a tremendous help to both memorization and embedding the truths in our hearts. And so I hope that singing this psalm today might take you back again to perhaps opening your Bible and going back to Psalm 45 and meditating on it 
uh, in the light of the Holy Spirit's insight and revelation into Christ and yourself and me, his church. My heart in admiration for the King This noble song composes like a pen Held by a skillful writer So my tongue sings about you most excellent
in the place of your fathers you have sons to become princes.